Hello, my name is Nico de Bok, and today I will do this video presentation about fleet management or mainly focusing on how to compose a fleet and what are important aspects you need to take into account when making your fleet. So, the introduction for today we'll talk about aircraft capacity, cost structure, utilization, capacity deployment, we'll do a case study, and we'll discuss flexibility in the fleet. So, capacity. There are a lot of different aircraft types, uh, but we can categorize these aircraft types in two main areas. The narrow bodies, small aircraft, small distances, small capacity, and the wide body aircraft, large capacities up to 600 passengers and long distances. So regarding cost, what are the differences between those two? Well, narrow bodies very logically have low cycle cost, short operations, less operations, etc. And wide body have high cycle cost. This doesn't per se make wide body aircraft more expensive to operate and that doesn't mean their margins are lower in the contrary action. If you look at this cur curve, um, we we're looking at the cost per nautical mile. And what we see is that when the distance increases, the cost per nautical mile decreases. And that's very logical if you think about it. Let's say our fixed cost, our, uh, yeah, our fixed cost or even our cycle cost excluding fuel etc and cost per passenger is 100 euros and we fly 10 kilometers then our cost per nautical mile is 10 euros if we fly 100 kilometers or nautical miles then our cost per nautical mile is 1 euro and that's why long distances have lower cost per nautical mile and it also means that the longer the bigger the distance is the higher the margin is and the higher the revenue, so the higher revenue per nautical mile. Just check a flight from Istanbul to Amsterdam and in Istanbul to John F. Kennedy, normal prices, not special offers, and compare them. And in, in perspective, the cost to, or the, 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 the ticket price to John F. Kennedy, New York, is far less in relation to that one to Amsterdam, simply because of this structure. Second part is we can have fly long distances with large capacities, but the second problem is we also need to be able to fill up our aircraft. If you don't, be, well, if you don't fill up our aircraft, we might not even make a profit as well. So utilization, often 80% or higher is an indication that your airline is healthy and is able to make a profit on a segment. Anything lower is often a problem, and that's why Utilization is a very important KPI for airlines to indicate if they're doing well on specific routes or in general. So let's summarize what we discussed. So we want to operate, or airlines want to operate, large capacities of long distances because of the high margins, high revenue, and low costs. But the problem is city pairs, even continent continental flights have problems with filling up aircraft. You need to be able to fill up aircraft, otherwise your utilization is too low and then you still have struggles regarding profitability. To counteract this problem, airlines are often or use not only for the connectivity purpose but also for filling up aircraft purpose a hub system. So they use a lot of domestic flights, so 737 to Barcelona or whatever, uh, to fill up one big flight to Tokyo. And the flight to Tokyo is the important one because the flight to Tokyo is the one that makes money. The regional flights are often a mo very marginal, break even or make even a loss. And that's why I have the last bullet point, operating smaller capacities result in higher cost per aeronautical signal. That's why if you operate large distances and you need a feeding system, it's very important that you make enough margins on your international flight to compensate for the losses or marginal income from the regional flights. So let's take a look at two case studies. Two case studies which are also about depending on the cost per nautical mile, but attack or look at that problem in a very different way. KLM. We fly from Munich to John F. Kennedy via Amsterdam. 
And our first leg is Munich Amsterdam. We we'll use small aircraft because if you have a large aircraft, the problem is filling it up and the large aircraft has high, higher cycle cost and we can't make use of the long advantage of the long distance. So we use a small aircraft. And the problem often with in KLM is that small aircraft, the, the, sh the European flights are not very profitable and make often with pressure of the local carriers and they make losses because they're also losing passengers so the utilization is dropping. Besides that you need about 50 of those narrow body aircraft to fill up one light body aircraft. And that's why KLM is very dependent and it's very important for KLM to have those wide body aircrafts to make money and fly long distances with high margins. And that's basically how KLM works. So they're very dependent on the international flights to be able to make a profit. Right now Ireland has small aircraft fly small distances but they tackle this problem in a totally different way. Let's take the case Eindhoven Stansted and we can buy tickets for 10 euros. Well, to start Ryanair's locals carry us so it gets rid of all the unnecessary costs etc. So the cycle costs are even lower. Besides, they make they use all the space in the aircraft, so more passengers, so relative to utilization has a better impact on reducing the cycles even more. So the cycles are very low, but the cost per not C model is still the same. But even though reducing all the costs or eliminating costs, 10 euros is not profitable. But what Ryanair does is very smart. What they do is they not eliminate all unnecessary operations, they also eliminate competition by being very aggressive. And just watch the video on Michael Leary, it's very typical Michael Leary, but he underlines the statement. And what Ryanair does is they become very aggressive, very low prices, they pull the market towards them. They control demand. By controlling demand, they can become market leader. Becoming market leader means that the power of that airline on a specific segment is higher. So they can control more what happens. And when they become market leader, they can play more with the prices and make profits on those routes. Entering new segments, segments, they will start with 10 euros and outcompete everyone and at a certain point they are the boss and they can decide what happens and at that point they can make profits. So for Ryanair it's not a case of working smart and using your distances and capacities. No, they use their business model and their cost structure by maybe losing money on 100 segments and earning money on 500 segments because they're the boss, such as in Belgium, England, Ireland, Spain, Italy and in the future probably more countries. This is just again an overview. Cost per nautical mile decreases with the increase of flight distance. Aircraft utilization increases with the increase of flight distance because of the feeding capacity, low cost per, which results in low cost per available seat mile, with the conclusion large capacity over long distances is most favorable. But of course, as the Ryanair case shows, there are some smart methods to still be very profitable in small small distances. Finally, just discuss the flexibility and commonality in the fleet. Commonalities um, is a good example of commonalities right now. There's only 77, 800. An advantage of that is they have the same, same pilot training, same maintenance programs, same spare parts, and you eliminate a lot of additional costs. But if you look at the chart below, we see that the bigger fleet, the bigger the commonality advantage. And that's because, for example, KLM is very big, it's a big fleet, and they operate in very uh, different distances, and the demand fluctuates. And to maximize or work most efficient on those segments, they use the appropriate capacity. So, for for example, in Munich, in the morning you fly with a Fokker 100, and in the evening you fly back with a 737-800, because there might be a connecting flight. So the bigger fleet, the more advantage you get from the commonality because you're more flexible and you can uh, react better to the demand. With this said, thank you very much uh, for watching this video and uh, hope for discussion uh, regarding the content and the questions.